fact, we're about to get a collision over here, so we need to full speed ahead because we're about to get some very nasty damage over here as that uh, submarine does make an emergency surface. Hello, hello, and welcome back to War on the Sea, everyone. After a week's hiatus, of course, I uh, will apologize for that. I did, in fact, have a uh, seasonal cold. Uh, it really puts me out of action, especially for recording. I barely breathe and speak. Uh, of course, two things very much need, <laughs> but uh, we're all better now. We're doing much better, and we're back ready to uh, get into the action, and uh, I'm sure there will be action today. You can see this after landing successfully on Melissa over here. If we look at the balance of power, we're very much in favour of taking that rather soon. The next couple of days should be all good. We're sending our supply group over to drop off just a few uh, pieces, some bits and pieces of engineering. We've got 72 on this Archerus, another 72 there, and that should be about it. We might decide to bring over a few supplies from Guadalcanal to support the invasion of Elisa, but I don't think that's going to be entirely necessary. However, we do have some backup supplies and such and fuel coming for Guadalcanal anyway um, from our first supplies group over here. And that's of course, we're now in the sort of uh, end game stage where all we really need to do to get a true victory is send Guadalcanal to a level five airfield. So that is going to be the priority moving forwards. Now, um, as far as the grand scheme of things goes, that is the number one priority. But um, as far as the fun fact goes, we are still going to be trying to get a surface engagement with a few battleships against this double Yamato task force over here. This is double Yamato's two Fusas, I believe, and a Congo. Uh, so rather, rather nasty stuff there. Um, so it looks like it just wants to park outside of Melissa for now. So that's absolutely fine. At least we know where it is. At least we know it's not going to interfere with anything. Uh, we are, of course, trying to send some supplies from Australia over to uh, Port Moresby, where we do just need some fuel and engineering for now to send that to a level 3 airfield for more strike aircraft available there. So are we in range at the moment? I don't think we are to uh, manage our cargo. No, we're not, but we are now. So we shall just load up all the engineering we can, get a little bit of fuel onto the Patapsco, and that won't quite be enough, unfortunately, on that one trip, but that's absolutely not a problem. Got all the time in the world to do that to upgrade. It's not the greatest priority. What might be a priority, though, is seeing exactly what this particular task force is. That might be submarines. Um, it might be some destroyers we left over from the previous engagement. We do have a uh, task force brawler over here, a brand new task force of the Keir Sergeant Illinois. We do have a cruiser group over here and a possible submarine group over here as well. Unfortunately, I think we're going to lose sight of that submarine uh, before uh, we can get some Sunderlands with some depth charges in. And of course, we don't have any destroyers in that area to keep solid sight. We do have this Kingfisher, which we might want to use though. So we'll keep that about and see if we can get hit that. Otherwise, not much else I want to do today. Just get more supplies over and see what we can do to secure our position. We might take Task Force Thunder to double check we need to resupply there. And I think we can take on this cruise group if, if uh, we can catch that. And I'm sure that's gonna push harder towards us there. Okay, so it's looking like we have made contact with that submarine, and it's actually two submarines over here with the Sunderland group. So, we, of course, we can only really strike the one. Uh, we do, of course, have depth charges loaded. Are they trying to submerge? Uh, I can't actually see their flaps, so I've just got to assume they're going to try and submerge. Looks like they are, they're bobbing up and down. Gonna try and come from the rear. Yeah, that one's absolutely submerging. What about this one? Not trying to submerge, that's absolutely fine. So that's just fine there. Let's move around then, come to the flank. And as we get closer on our approach, it looks like that submarine's still not too bothered. We can see the uh, fins over here not looking like it wants to submerge. That's absolutely brilliant. We just press uh, the attack button then. And as we've seen previously, it doesn't matter so much that uh, the submarine isn't trying to submerge. These depth charges should uh, pretty much detonate on impact if they are on target. Look a little bit off for my liking here, but we've got to take the opportunity while we can. We are dropping, very nice spread there. Just a few depth charges per plane, of course. But they have absolutely hit, and that will do the job. Absolutely will do the job there. Already sinking. Of course, that's quite likely a submerge. 
Uh, go over here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The, uh, I think it's going to take on some rather nasty flooding there. Let's take a report. Critical to critical. Okay, so submarines absolutely everywhere. Task Force Brawler has come into contact with uh, at least one submarine so far we've sighted. Not ideal, of course. Right on top of our Samson. So, if anything, uh, we can certainly take this. We will have to charge straight in, though, with the Samson. Um, yeah, we'll keep that at a decent speed of 60 knots there. And look at the position, it's looking like it's going to try and hit our Minneapolis, Illinois or Jenkins. So, break over here, turn away, thank you very much, as quickly as possible. Same with the Brooklyn's going to have to move away. Atlanta actually can stay at a fairly slow speed of 10 knots because it does have sonar capabilities. Uh, Jervis can do the same, I think, and see if there's any other submarines on our starboard side. Uh, Levelette though can circle back round. We come over here, try and keep contact with that. Pensacola should be fine. Kearsarge we will increase to max speed. Carry on at full steam ahead. Same with the Illinois. That's going to overtake the Kearsarge, so just take it a little bit slower. And I think that should be about it. With the Jenkins, I think we'll just pull round at the side here. It's a fairly decent speed, and we'll just watch out for those torpedoes as they come, of course. Quite likely just get a shotgun uh, from the submarine over here. In fact, what we want to do with the Samson, I think, is just stop, actually. Because that submarine quite likely going to come straight under our aft. So probably, uh, I was expecting that to, uh, like I said, just... Uh, fire its torpedoes straight away. We do have a second submarine, so Jenkins is going to have to look at that, actually. So let's bring this over here. Come on. There we go, that'll do. And uh, let's go for the Samson. I'm going to just drop right now, actually. While we can. Might get one or two hits there. If we're very, very lucky. Just waiting for that detonation over here. Uh, no, not quite lucky enough with that. So it's quite likely we're going to lose contact with this because it is on our aft now. Which is a shame. We do have to watch out for this second submarine. It doesn't look like it's firing off anything. Which is excellent. So what we'll do is once again turn around with Samson. Tight turn there. Watch the Jenkins. Do we see anything else? That is just... A, oh no, number three contact submarine bearing 130. Excellent, okay. Hmm, that's rather strange. So, uh, that is off of our port side of the Samson. That does look like it might try to hit something. So, well, we'll just keep on turning with the Samson so far. That's uh, on that source, of course, anyway. Just need to move in with the Jenkins a little harder there, get some. Depth charge is ready. Levelette can increase speed, I think, to get that tighter turn and get on targets a little easier. Move away there. Submarine is, of course, still over here. Disengaging. How are we doing over here, though? That's the question. Can we sight that sub from where we are? Hmm. Okay. Still a bit of a way away. I want to just increase speed there, but at the uh, risk of losing contact, of course. I think we should be fine, actually. If we let that uh, steam ahead of us, we can chase it. Well, we've tried to hit the number three submarine over here 
um, once, and we've just got some very minor damage according to the damage reports it has unfortunately uh, recovered from that. The number two, however, is on heavy damage and moderate flooding, which we are going to tail with the Jenkins. We'll just give that an automatic attack order because we also have our Samson about to drop onto another submarine over here. In fact, we're going to drop, I think, uh, about now, actually, just give that a little bit more lead increase our speed to 14 knots we will overtake that the Atlanta is also on an automatic attack order because we're trying to multitask uh, just trying to see I think we're dropping a little too early there so we'll have to do that uh, manually because it is actually looking at that very very early indeed uh, this is a little bit off so I want to redirect over here Jenkins will have to watch out for a collision with the Atlanta Just trying to get exactly onto the uh, enemy's line while keeping contact as well. How are we looking over here? We are still dropping. Okay, if we're still dropping there, we'll just keep an eye on over here. Just want to shift our asses around. I think if the Atlanta pulls for a stop here, so we can keep contacts there. Very fine balance over here. How are we doing against that submarine? Looks like we didn't get any hits with that Atlanta strike. We take another report. Uh, very minor damage, and that number two is recovering a tad. Should not be the case. In fact, with the Atlanta, we might just overtake that if we do keep moving. Uh, the number two. So what we'll do is we'll just hold with Jenkins for now to keep contact. The Atlanta can swivel around to fair speed. We'll match roughly at 11 knots. How we're doing over here. Probably want to uh, just align ourselves a bit better over here. Press fast forwards. Yeah, okay. Making contact once again. Atlanta's looking okay. So, just stop over here. Juice speed quite a bit and concentrate on Atlanta. In fact, we're about to get a collision over here, so we need to full speed ahead because we're about to get some very nasty damage over here as that uh, submarine does make an emergency surface might just miss out on that so what we need to do is take everyone off of fire at will we certainly have because otherwise we're going to start getting some nasty nasty uh, friendly fire as everyone starts shooting very close to this Atlanta so if we get our guns over here to hold get an aim on that and fire That's the way to do it. <laughs> That's absolutely the way to do it. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so we're going to take some return fire there, but we should just be coming around there. It's taking a fair few shots for a submarine, actually. There we go. So at least one out of four submarines is down, because we did sight a fourth, of course. We're going to have to just stop here before we beat Shire, Illinois in Pensacola. That'll do. Should really bring the Jervis around, because that would be quite the help, but I think a little too late now. So how are we doing with this uh, submarine? We have lost sight as we try to multitask everything, but I'm sure if we just pause here, it will catch back up. How about the Jenkins? We're actually just about over that. However, it's going the wrong direction for us. And now we're just about in line up with the Jenkins. And our Samson has in fact uh, re-established contact with the number one so we are going to follow that at around 30 knots we'll come back over to the Jenkins and I think really we need to start firing out now do we have a lot of torpedoes uh, torpedoes depth charges left we have 30 fire out as many as we can in one go we are moving at one knot speed ourselves but I think this is moving towards 10 or 11 so uh, we will be giving quite a decent lead here give us a somewhat upper view so we can see how close those really are just need a few hits, just a small handful to do some decent damage. Looks like we've fallen through the model there with uh, a couple of depth charges. They just don't detonate quite at the right time, unfortunately. And uh, that's going to just get away. But fret not, we have re-established contact with the Samson's uh, submarine over here. So we're just going to once again give ourselves a decent lead over here and drop as correctly as possible. If we do miss this one, we are going to call this particular strike a day. We do have one submarine down. 
Let's give that a little more lead to allow our depth charges to uh, drop correctly. It will slow down our speed a tad here. Well, two out of four, we can't complain there whatsoever. Um, in fact, the Type three, Type C, rather, the number three over here, did fire some torpedoes, but we spotted them um, a little too late. However, they were at the rear of our Pensacola, and our Pensacola simply needed to keep steaming forwards to avoid them. Uh, so absolutely textbook there. Um, however, I would have liked to have caught all of them, but we can't get too greedy. Um, and we did actually uh, shoot down some aircraft with our guns, which is uh, rather interesting. That would have been small arms because I took auto fire flak off, which is rather interesting. There's less scouts, less submarines, much safer for Task Force Brawler. But we're not out of the woods yet. We have sighted some incoming zeros over here. However, they're not the threat. It's all of these dive bombers coming in from a bit, well, certain aircraft carrier northwards of Malaita. So with our Kearsarge being able to launch out some Hellcats, that's exactly what we've done. So they're currently targeting some zeros because we have uh, fire at will on. So we are just gonna take a quick second to individually target the uh, incoming vowels. So with our orders out, we're making some good headway with our Hellcats. We should bet make this in uh, one or two passes, hopefully, uh, as long as we are on target onto these vowels. The Zeros are dragging behind. They're deciding where they want to uh, send dogfires altitude, um, but they are going to have to fly through our small arms and such. So hopefully we get those down. Looks like it's only the two Zeros so far. I would expect an aircraft carrier to send out a full flight to protect the attack aircraft it's sent up, but we're approaching the first group of vowels now. Hopefully we get that out. So one down and some damage, that's absolutely fine. Can't expect perfection on your first try of course, but every vowel shot down is always a great result. Look at that, we've got a good handful down already. Very, very nice indeed. We're gonna carry on to the final group here as our first Hellcats do circle back round and that. It's a very nice first wind there, first strike. Let's get in on the back over here. Maybe we can manually fire out early there to get on target. We certainly can. And that is the majority of uh, vowels down already. Just getting onto the back of this one. Then we can certainly take the time to get rid of any zeros that would still be in the area. I haven't noticed if those have gone down yet. So let's take reports. They may well have gone down. They certainly have 14 and 14, but we can see on the strategic view that there are still some torpedo bombers coming in. So I'm sure we're back straight away with that engagement. Okay, so we might be getting two birds with one stone in this particular engagement. We can see some straggling dive bombers coming in here. Hopefully it's just these two sighted groups so far. I'm sure it is because our radar is extending to such a range that we can see all of these oncoming torpedo bombers coming over the island here. So let's once again take a second to uh, just target these vowels very specifically. Should only need one group of Hellcats over there. I would like to send the majority of course to these Kates. Um, let's see, we do have this one still uh, broken. So we'll send this one over to the rear vowels. That should be fine. So what we'll do with the rest of the Hellcats is we'll dive down a little, expecting the Kates, of course, to dive down themselves, getting into an attack position there. We'll start moving towards them, we'll target them later on. Just watching what the Kates do themselves. So there's no need for them to dive down just yet as they do climb over the island. However, it is looking like they're diving down. But it is gonna take quite a while to get over there. So actually, uh, with that being said, we might as well just get our Hellcats on to uh, the Vowels because we can see uh, the range is getting modded up over here. Let's see, it's 36 kilometers all the way to those cakes. We certainly have time to deal with the dive bombers first.
Well, we are well into the next day now at 10 or 7 hours, and we may have just sighted. Uh, we're trying to hunt down where that uh, airstrike came from. Probably rather stupidly, it might just be uh, wandering into a big trap. I forget exactly the composition of that previous task force we did sight in this area. So let's go and have a look. As a bit of context, we're also trying to hunt down this cruise group, which is providing a lot of scouting in this open water here. We don't like that at all. And we are about to drop off some supplies onto Guadalcanal. But let's have a look at this particular uh, engagement over here and make a sighting there. Okay, so there is certainly more than one particular Japanese group out here. We've sighted what is a little more minor group than I had thought uh, to find out here. We do see a Congo supported by one, two Oedos and a couple destroyers. We can certainly take this on with Task Force Brawler without much uh, issue there. So uh, I think we're certainly going to try for this. Uh, we just need to mark that up onto the strategic map, of course. Yeah, just a couple light crews and some destroyers there. We can certainly deal with that. Mark that one up then. And we'll remove this pin, because you don't need it. And uh, what we'll do is just go straight full steam ahead. Should take 3.3 .3 hours if uh, they carry on stationary there, but I imagine they'll be coming this sort of course straight towards us. Uh, and we'll get on to uh, drop off our supplies onto Guadalcanal, like so. We are in range. Have a look to see what that does to Guadalcanal. We are able to upgrade that to a tier three airfield, which is brilliant. So next, once again, we do still need engineering and fuel, but we will want to uh, top up the uh, supplies because the next drop will reduce us down to uh, two and a half thousand, of course. We did uh, uh, exchange some supplies from Guadalcanal over to Melissa to support that attack. We do now have enough supplies to support our troops there. Only a minor amount. Actually, the tick around hasn't changed just yet, so we need to wait another hour or two for that. But that's absolutely not a problem. So if we take these supplies, go back down. Of course, we really only need to rely on uh, the New Hebrides base now because we do only need supplies and engineering. And we already have a good stockpile of that. And of course, it's only a few days until we do get resupplied once again. So uh, it's a shorter trip. Uh, between these two bases rather than going all the way back to the Cairns and Cookton once again. Yamato group is still sat idly by and that suits us just fine as ever. Well in a small twist of fate it is actually Task Force Thunder which engages its targets uh, first. So we are on the rear at 18.5 kilometers roughly of a light cruiser group once again, a single Miyoko, two Oedos, oh no did I misidentify this? I thought there were two Oedos. Uh, so this is in fact a Sendai, we'll have to uh, correct that. Uh, let's take the Australia because that is targeting it. Just had the idea it was uh, two Oedos in my head. So used to seeing them in this campaign. Uh, but absolutely fine, so it's a single Oedo, Sendai, handful of destroyers, exactly what sorts of destroyers do we have? Uh, one of the Yak-3 over here, Yugamo, Asasha or Kagedo. Uh, we do have another of that over here, and once again, one of those as well. We are going to be losing sight, which is a shame. Radar coverage should be fine over there. It's a shame to lose sight of that. We do have some shots landing, but uh, of course they're the initial shots with very low solution. It's a shame. What if we can change the Colorado then over to the Oilo for now? Hold out on there, gain solution. Uh, we might just want to charge some destroyers a little closer then, as well as this Astoria. Uh, so number 10, Freedy. And the Waller can go into a line ahead. Come on. Like so. Uh, because we're held back from max speed with our slumwhat damaged Colorado. As if uh, max speed Colorado is of course fast in itself. We are taking return fire though. The um, Oedos once again do have that surprisingly long range. And they of course have their own scout plane up. We really should have launched our own at the start before we entered the engagement. So always a bit of a misplay there. What we can do is actually do also fire flight to get people on. 
was hoping really to be closer if our destroyers could fire, but I think that's a bit of a blessing in disguise, really, because I mean, there's a Cersei range as well. That's quickly dealt with the enemy scout. We are back with the uh, Miyoko now, so we're going to change over to there, at least with the Colorado. We can hold out there, and I think we'll take our heavy cruisers over there as well, actually, just to increase the rates some shells do get over to that target. We'll hold for now, just rearrange our guns. Uh, the Astoria as well we can do the same. I do need to uh, change the targeters over here, the directors. How are we looking over the Australia? Still building up, we should probably get some spotting shells to help out really. Colorado, 58 and rising. Give that a second or two, that is under fire. It's taking the brunt of the damage there. In fact, a very direct hit onto the turret there. I think we're all good now though. We don't necessarily need to spot with that. Solution's quite high. Raised to 90 there. With this extreme range, this is going to be a bit of a slog. Well, unfortunately, we did lose sight of that task force completely because they were playing it smart and kiting away from us, making it very difficult indeed. And because of our very slow battleship in this group, uh, we can't quite catch up to that. It is quite tempting to quickly detach our Colorado and chase that down. Uh, but I really don't like leaving that isolated. However, we do have some good news. We've just been given 100 points uh, from rest and repair from the dockyard, and I believe that uh, that would have been some sort of battleship. I do forget exactly what we had in there. Uh, it would have been battleship and a heavy cruiser, I believe. If we look through, what can we get? Uh, if we go to New Sea, obviously American. Let's go to... Uh, some battleships might well have been in North Carolina. I do believe we use that or a South Dakota. We do have a South Dakota in the dockyard currently. Might have actually been in Iowa, you know. Uh, that, yeah, I think it was the Iowa. So what we can do is send that out immediately. Maybe send that to Task Force Thunder and swap that round with the Colorado for now, so that we do uh, buff that up and give us a fast battleship to head this task force. And that gives us uh, the option to strike or retreat as we so want. So I think we're going to do that right now, actually. Let's do it. New seat. Iowa, thank you very much. And we might actually, before we do that, just think about swapping around a damaged destroyer. Because uh, we certainly have the points to do so. Give them some fresh reinforcements. Maybe another Fletcher there. Warrington is looking a little damaged, and so is the Afridi, but nothing too heavy, really. I think maybe swap round at the Savannah, perhaps. Perhaps. So in the end, after much deliberation, we decided to go nuclear with this uh, task force. And actually, rather than simply replace a couple of ships, we're going to provide some straight upgrades. And of course, the form of Iowa replacing Colorado. But rather than simply replace Brooklyn with another Brooklyn, we're going to replace it with an Alaska. Just because we can, of course. We have the points to spend. And I'd like to have that reassurance that we do have that extra smashing firepower in the form of a well, it's up, to, it's up to anyone's guess whether this is a heavy cruiser or battle cruiser, of course, the uh, ever continuous argument historically what the Alaska does identify as, of course. Uh, so, with that being said, I think that is unfortunately all we have time for today, guys. It may well end up being a shorter one than usual, but uh, this is just going to drag on a little too much longer if we do get another engagement in. But quite a lot to work digest for you in that case. So uh, thank you very much for watching once again. I hope you have enjoyed the video today, and I shall see you in the future. May all of your nights and days be auspicious. Goodbye.